Hello, so I just approved a comment on YouTube and it was kind of a reminder that I actually released the video on how I decided to change the filtering system on the AU8800 desoldering gun that I purchased. And I didn't realize I actually released that video. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I thought it was still sitting on a hard drive somewhere needing to be edited before I uploaded it to uh, YouTube and actually, you know, published it. But apparently I had already published it, not realizing that I published it. So I also owe you an update on this. I've run the gun like this now for three months and I finally experienced my own clog. And before you go thinking, oh, the gun clogs, that's horrible, that's not good. I don't want a desoldering gun that clogs. This clog was absolutely my fault. If you look at this, what we have here is a big block of solder. And it is the same diameter of the ceramic filter I put in there. That is just a huge piece of solder. And that's because I ran it for two or three months, closer to three, without bothering to check how much solder was gathered up in there. I'm happy to say, despite 4.2 grams of solder, because I weighed it, it never broke through the filter. There is a little bit of discoloration here on the filter. You can see the discoloration. This is on the back side where the solder was captured on this side where it's more, more black, black tinted. Um, this little discoloration here you see in the middle here is not solder breaking through. This little discoloration is actually the fumes from the flux actually that got captured in the first filter. So the solder went up against the filter, the fumes still made it through, it got captured a little bit here which caused the discoloration here, and then it hit the filter that I had in the gun. And the filter that I had in the gun is this dark and dingy yellow kind of tar looking, you know the only way we're going to be able to get this is, what do I have here, uh, the data sheet for the 8584 voltage pack, it's a white piece of paper. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe I can get, you can see how yellow that filter is. This is the filter that was in the gun. Let me get my pointer back in my left hand. This is the filter that was in the gun. And you see the yellowish tint on that filter and how yellowish that is. That didn't capture any solder. It didn't need to capture any solder because this one stopped all the solder. This one captured all the flux fumes which is a, a flux fumes can be very sticky and not something I want in the diaphragm of the pump on my 8800 desoldering gun either because of how sticky it will be. It will actually cause the, the diaphragm to eventually start to stick and slow down and maybe just not perform as well a year from now. So the double filter idea was actually a great idea. Using the ceramic filters was an awesome idea because on top of not only did it capture the solder, is it easier to clean out and change the filter, but it actually captured more of the flux than I believe that the stock filter system, those little yellow sponges that it came with, would have captured. So I'm very happy after three months of abusing it straight without checking or changing the filter, my fault again, it did clog and I realized it was clogged because my canister was full. But after three months, these two filters went through complete abuse and passed with flying colors. I'm very happy on the results. I mean, that, that is, that's a good sized piece of solder there. That's, that's no joke. Um, <laughs> oh well. Anyway, the good news is, since I caused the clog, and it's the only clog I've been able to actually see in this gun was one that was actually caused by my fault, my failure, and my neglect. But the point is it did clog. I had a chance to use the push rod to actually push through the solder and I noticed that it wasn't going all the way through so I had a chance to break out the drill bit. And the drill bit went in and I was able to slowly turn it while the gun was heated very carefully down the barrel, down through the heating element and everything, through the soldering tip and I got through I was able to back it out and then put the push rod back through and a little bit of solder came pushing out into the canister. I saw a fly in there, so okay. And then as soon as I hit the trigger, I caused that suction. Now that I freed up that clog, and the suction just simply sucked all the rest of the clog solder out of the, uh, the bit in the heating element there and just cleaned itself out. Boom, done. It was great. Worked.
awesome. So the push rod, the drill bit concept, these little tools for if you do happen to ever get a clog, work really good. Uh, take your time when drilling. You're drilling through solder here. You're, you're also hand drilling, turning it. So just take your time. It will eventually go through. Once it does, don't turn the drill bit. Once it goes through, pull it straight back because you want to pull some of that solder back in the drill grooves with you to actually leave a hole there. So that worked really good. The filtering system using the ceramic filters worked really good. Um, you can see I put new ones in here. So these are pure white compared to this uh, dingy yellow one that captured all the... Uh, all the flux uh, fumes from the desoldering that I did over three months. Uh, got a new filter in the canister. As a matter of fact, I never even put grease in the canister, but the new filter in the canister was took two seconds to cut a new filter out. And uh, again, using a dime as the template. And I never put grease in here, but I think I just took a pair of tweezers and just kind of went around the inside of it and the little bit of solder that was stick, stuck to the side of the canister just kind of fell out. But if you want easier cleanup, I would recommend actually putting a light coat of grease on the inside of the canister. These filters work absolutely great with it. No need to put any grease on the filters because the filters allow just the right amount of vacuum suction to actually occur through the, between, you know, through the two filters while capturing all the fumes and the solder at the same time in different locations too at that. Um, and again, if you missed my first video, I'll put a link down below showing how I uh, designed my own filter system for this based off of some of the older Heiku 880 design. As a matter of fact, I do have it behind me. It was a 50 foot roll of 1 8 thick ceramic filter, or yeah, ceramic filtering that uh, is a half. No, one inch wide, one eighth, one eighth thick, 50 foot roll. I think it ran me $22. I use it on multiple applications. I mean, it takes up to something like 2100 or 2500 degrees easily. Uh, and, and they're great for uh, any type of heating insulation. If you're not getting enough heat around a particular heating element or something, you can use it as an insulation with capped on tape. You can use it on 3D print heads with the capped on tape to hold it in place as well. Um, and apparently they make really, really good filters from this stuff too. $20 got me 50 foot. I've had that five years already and it will probably last me another 10 years before I'm anywhere near through that roll. I'll probably end up giving a bunch of it away. But there's my update. I'll put a link to the other video showing how I made the filters. And I'll also put a link again to the product for this, which is purchased at uh, DigiKey. And if you're not local in stateside in the United States, you can uh, look at the specs at least of the product. And by looking at the specs, you'll be able to find something similar maybe in one of your suppliers. For somebody on your side of the world that will work out for you. You know what? Let's go ahead and just show how easy it is real quick. I want to cut a little strip off here. I want to pre-make a couple filters in advance. So this way the next time I'm in the middle of desoldering something I have them ready to go. There goes my poor cheap Vidar microscope hitting the ground. Oh well. Really need to get a better microscope anyway. But it was very simple. Let me see here. All right. So I got this. There we go. So I got this block of wood. Apparently I had some left over from the last one I cut. Probably didn't need to cut more. But we'll make a few and we'll put them a put them aside in the drawer. Originally I was playing with a penny for the template and even a nickel for the template and they're just a little too big so I backed away from the penny and the nickel. Ended up using the dime in the end and made a nice size template. Standard X-Acto knife. 
as long as it's sharp. Something soft underneath, like a block of wood. If you got an ESD mat, you definitely don't want to do this on top of the mat because you will end up cutting through this very easily and putting a hole in your mat. And I was just simply taking the dime and tracing it. Like so, then I can lift this piece off while holding pressure on the dime. And then of course I can, if I miss this section, just trim it, trim little pieces off there, <laughs> blow them away. And that was it. That's the filter ready to go for the next time I'm filled up in my canister. You can definitely see the the, the color difference there at that, that angle. So let me throw these out before I forget. But it really is that simple. Just a dime. And your choice of your blade. I may actually file the little ridges down on this dime because the knife keeps getting stuck against these little ridges as I'm trying to cut smoothly around it. Or I may end up just cutting a piece of perfectly circled metal to use as a template for future future filters as I make them but it doesn't take much pressure goes right around trim off any little excess now I have one for the gun one for the canister we'll put that in the drawer with the other filter stuff the uh, ceramic ones that it came with let me see the other little bag I can use. I do. Here we go. So just make a couple of these, put them in a bag, seal them up, throw them in a drawer, set them aside, ready to go. Oh yeah, the grease. Maybe I do want to grease up that a little bit. Let's try it. Try that on this round. Let's try the uh, greasing up the canister. So we got some Q-tips here. I'm going to actually pull this all out. Let's get rid of this all. I'm going to keep this block of filter as a reminder to change. Or that block of solder as a reminder to change my filter once in a while. I'll keep that right up, right up in front of me on my shelf. Or maybe I should keep it in the tray here, in the sponge tray, as a reminder to check it before... I start desoldering something else, a new project. And since I didn't use any grease initially in this canister, it's being a little harder to clean out than it should be. So let me grab some rubbing alcohol here. Ah, uh, there we go. Rubbing alcohol will cut right through that. Nice thing about rubbing alcohol is it will dry by itself nicely too. Put my finger in here so I can get a little bit better there. A little bit more pressure. Like new. Nice clean canister. Ready to go. Let that air dry. I think I just got little pieces of solder on the outside by dropping it. There we go. So we'll let that evaporate and dry off. Got a nice clean canister now. We'll take some of this grease, put it on a clean Q-tip. Shouldn't need a lot because we're just spreading it around the inside just to help the solder bounce off and that way stick to the canister and make it a little easier to clean in the end. Now I didn't do this last time. I had the idea. I put it in the video, but I never actually implemented this idea. So 
we'll see how it works. Only one way to find out, and that's to try it. If anything, it's not going to be harder to clean. It might be the same, may not make a difference, or it might be easier to clean the next time I go to empty it. But I don't think it will be harder. When you're putting grease inside the canister, I want to note this real quick. This lip here, you have a little lip where this rubber garment goes into. That little lip there, you see the little line? You definitely do not want to grease past that little lip. You want this rubber garment to be able to get a really good stick and seal in there. So we're not greasing this part where that rubber goes. We want to stay away from that. And as far as this goes, I think I may have gotten a little grease on that very end there. It's not going to hurt it though. If anything, this is more like an O-ring seal, so a little bit of grease won't hurt it if you did get a little bit of grease at the far end here. And the pressure of the gun with the spring load will keep that tight and sealed. Now we have a little bit of grease in the canister. We have new filters in there. I'll check back in uh, three months if I remember and let you know how the clean out goes. If I remember, I'll break out the camera before I actually clean out the filter system next time, before it gets clogged and before it gets to this point. Um, and I'll even demonstrate how easy the clean out may be and how much difference the, uh, the grease may have made for, for cleaning out. Um, we already know how much difference the ceramic filter makes versus the spring filter idea filled with grease. We already know that's a lot easier. So the question is now at this point, does the grease inside the canister make cleaning up the canister a little easier? If it doesn't, it didn't take me that long to take an alcohol pad and just simply swipe it around inside that canister and clean it up. It, and I'm not using anything special, just normal medical kind of alcohol, basic, basic rubbing alcohol. This isn't even strong. This is 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent isopropyl. I think that's how you pronounce that. I don't know. A diabetic that doesn't know how to pronounce the rubbing alcohol pads. Oh well. Um, it's like 70 percent alcohol. It's not even like 95 and 90 percent. It's not that strong. Uh, but it was enough to, to clean off any gunk that got on the canister over three months. And the canister looks like brand new. So it doesn't take long to clean up at all. Well, I hope you appreciated the update and hope it actually helps. And, you know, if you own one of these and you decide to buy the ceramic filter and you use the dime template idea and, and compare it to how you've been using it with the, the metal spring filter that it comes with and you find out it does work, uh, feel free to drop a comment. Um, I'd like to hear from you and, you know, like to know other people are getting the same type of success I'm getting and not experiencing any issues with it. And please subscribe, click thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll talk to you later.